Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Welcome back to the channel that is sending stupidity the way of all yeller. This is day one of six days of celebration of my 5,000 subscribers. I cannot believe that I have got so many subscribers in just two months. You guys are amazing. Today, we're having a look at... Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you may be. CC here, Chris. From New York, uh, Westchester County. Oh God. What is it with these flat earther YouTuber intros? It's just infuriating. This guy's watched too much Jim Carrey. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> he recently released a video called Observations on Our Flat Earth. So I'm gonna have a look at that with you after the intro. Oh, hey, fight. You mind if I jump in there? I was just watching this video CC posted and I had some thoughts on it. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, Brainy. No worries. Um, okay, you cover that one. I'll do a couple others. I'll just have a quick check for his channel whilst you guys watch my intro. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Find the Yeah, so, whew, there's a, a lot of crazy in there, huh? Conspiracies about flat earth, uh, moon landing denials, ISS not being real, space being fake, straws. Yeah, yeah, straws, you know, the things you drink with. Yeah, straws. Anyway, I've chosen a video of his titled, Let's Have Some Fun, Flat Earth versus Globe Earth. Yeah, I'm sure this is going to be fun. Unless we have to listen to that intro again. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris from... Yeah, yeah, we know Chris from New York, Westchester County. <clears throat> it's February 28th, uh, 2018. I, um... It wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have those dramatic pauses every time you speak. I have a couple of things to say real quick and uh, I want to I want to get your opinion about it. Um, this is a uh, globe earth versus uh, flat earthers, okay? Um, which would be me, a flat earther and a uh, globe earther would be nice if I had somebody right here to chat with, but actually I have in the past. Um, and it leads nothing to usual but disaster because globe earthers believe in people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye the Science Guy, Stephen Hawking's, Scott Kelly. These are people. Well, Scott Kelly's an astronaut, but uh, you know people still believe what he has to say. When you say believe in them, do you mean did we? think that they actually existed or do we trust in their education and qualifications and skills in their particular field for instance if you called out a plumber would you say that he was indoctrinated and stuff because he's qualified and trained and educated as a plumber um these are people that globe earthers look up to and it's it's a shock to me it really is a shock to me uh, I mean, you could tear apart each of these people and, and uh, well, let's, for example, let's start with Stephen Hawking's, who doesn't even talk, okay? Stephen Hawking's did not talk because he had motor neuron disease, which slowly paralyzed his entire body and eventually stopped him being able to talk. What has this got to do with the fact that he was one of the smartest men that has ever lived? And people believe what he has to say, but we don't really know who's behind that microphone. I'm sure people... You might have beliefs and, and, and might even know who's behind the microphone. If you're watching my video and you do know who's behind the microphone, it'd be nice if you could let me know, but I suspect it's probably NASA. Ah, NASA! But of course! Why didn't I realize Stephen Hawkins is controlled by NASA? It's surprising that they've got time to do all this with all the rockets they're sending to the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, but Globe Earthers believe that that's, that's true, that's reality that Stephen Hawking's is uh, really talking to them. Um, Bill Nye the science guy. Are you kidding me? I can't even believe I'm bringing him up. 
This guy's not even a freaking scientist, for Christ's sake. Well done. That's right, he's not a scientist. But he is an engineer with a master's degree in mechanical engineering, which means he's really, really, really good at maths. Probably better than most actual scientists. Fun fact about Bill Nye, early on in his career working for Boeing, he stopped the 747 from being scrapped in production by inventing a hydraulic resonance depression system. Oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you... I hate to say bad things about somebody, but pretty much everything that comes out of his mouth is bullshit. So you hate to say bad things about people, but you just accused someone in a wheelchair of being controlled by NASA. You called Bill Nye stupid, and now Neil deGrasse Tyson is speaking a load of bullshit. Isn't it funny that whenever somebody says, I don't like to say bad things about somebody, the next thing that comes out of their mouth is a bad thing about somebody. So what's your problem with Neil deGrasse Tyson? Is it that he has a bachelor's degree in physics, a first with honors, same as me, or that he has a doctorate in astronomy, or that he has spent so much of his life observing the universe and trying to figure out where we are in the universe, or that he's got about 50 honorary doctorates from around the world because of his exemplary services to science? I don't think there's one truth that he's ever, ever said at all, as far as I'm concerned. And half the time, he doesn't even make any sense, okay? He's never said a true word in his life. Bit of a bold accusation there, CC. You got anything to back that up? And he does make sense. He makes perfect sense. It's just you're too fucking stupid to understand what he's saying and your idiotic Fleur friends just twist his words to suit their narrative. Because globe earthers don't seem to understand. They can't grasp reality. Yeah, most of them are, you know, people who are paid to do this. We're not paid to do this. Why does everybody keep on thinking we're... Oh. Hello? Hello? Yeah, NASA, hi. Um, yeah. The, I, I know, I'm kind of busy. All right, cool. All right, I know, yeah, you said about, you're tripling the pay, I know. All right, look, just, just send the money in the in the briefcase like normal. Yeah, that's fine. Look, I've, I've told you, these, these are the times I record. If you, yeah, thanks. Just pass that on to Mary at HR. All right, thanks. Speak to you later. Bye. I just edit that out. Um, um but... They just can't seem to grasp the reality. Let's just do a wake-up call. Hello, hello, Globe Earther, you there? Oh. Uh, get off, you weirdo. Don't touch me. There we go. Okay, I think I got you. I got your got your attention now. Okay, y you live on a flat plane. Okay, uh, it's motionless. Yeah, so you morons keep saying, pay attention. He's about to flat smack us. Just for a quick example, I don't have any fancy geometry for you, or I don't have any mathematical uh, engineering skills, or. Uh, well, wow, can't say I'm surprised. I've never met a flirt with any of those skills. You know, the skills that Stephen Hawking, Bill Nye, and Neil deGrasse Tyson has. But but go ahead, you try and explain it to me whilst having none of the skills necessary to do so. Go on. You know, I can't do anything like that for you, but I can give you an examples, okay, of just everyday shit. Sorry, sorry, what was that? You can give me an examples of everyday shit. And examples. Like, for example, motion sickness, you know? I, and I've brought this up before. Motion sickness. People have this. You know, that's when the equilibrium, you know, is, is not all right up there. Um, and, and, and they can't stand the slightest movement at all. Now, a globe earther believes that we're spinning at 1,000 miles per hour, and the clouds are moving at 2,700 miles per hour. That must be, because they're traveling faster than, you know, the, the, the planet, right? Well, no, that's not true. No, no, you're right. It's not true, because we aren't spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. You don't measure spin in miles per hour. We are spinning at 0 0.000694 RPM. Look at that clock on your wall. See the hour hand? Right, we're spinning half as fast as that. Woo! So back to what I was saying with the uh, with the plain Earth and the people who have this motion sickness. Okay, if any slight movement, they get sick. They'll get sick in a freaking car for Christ's sake if it's going over forty miles per hour. They'll get sick on a boat if it's traveling thirty miles per hour and it's a little wavy. They get sick too. So they can't tolerate any any motion at all whatsoever. So how could they be on uh, living, uh, you know, nicely on, on, and comfortably on a supposed planet that's moving at a thousand miles per hour, spinning at a thousand miles per hour? I mean, moving a hell of a lot faster than that, but just the spin 
is a thousand miles per hour. And they're hunky dory. Because you're mentally deficient, moron, motion is relative. The earth is spinning at a constant rate. It is traveling around the sun at a constant rate. They don't change. However, if you're in a car, you're slowing up, you're speeding down, you're going over bumps, you're swaying side to side. And if you're at sea, and trust me when I say this, I'm ex-Navy, when you're out there, the ocean is most certainly not flat and motionless. Because we're not moving. We're motionless. We're, we're, we're standing still here. We're, we're not going anywhere, all right? We're not traveling anywhere. We're not in space because there is no space. Yeah, there is space, mate, between your fucking ears. Another thing that I wanted to bring up are the tides, okay? Sometimes the tides are so intense when you get the supposed sun and the moon because that's the gravitational pull, you know? And, and, and they get so large that these waves of water come through. You probably know what I'm going to say. At least the Flat Earthers would know what I'm going to say. Well, I don't know exactly what you're going to say, but I bet it's fucking stupid. Um, but we know it's not the sun and the moon that are creating that. Yep, yeah, really fucking stupid. The thing is, you cannot explain what does do it. But you know for certainty that the tides are not caused by the sun and the moon's gravitational field. No, you just refuse to accept actual facts. The actual mechanics behind the tide are a lot more complicated than you think. For a full explanation of how the tides actually work, if you click on the link above, you can go and check it out on the Baldy Catch channel. Okay, uh, we're not 100% sure because a lot of people have different beliefs on it, and I'm not gonna go there yet. All right, that involves a little bit more research. Yeah, it does, but um, research isn't really something that flat earthers do, is it? It's um, more like fumbling through the dark and misunderstanding stuff. This video is from a year ago. How's your research going? A couple of quick examples is sometimes that people say that's that's God breathing. You know, it could be. I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna denounce it. Did you, Did you hear that? He's not going to denounce the fact that the tides could be caused by God breathing, but he knows for certainty that it's not a gravitational influence of the sun and the moon. Some sort of other mechanism that's creating the water, the tides. Uh, mechanical, perhaps. Mechanical, like some pumps or something. Like every few hours, they've uh, got to get some guys out. All right, Dave, it's time to man the pumps. Come on, then. Oh, here you go. Oh, get them tides going. You know, in a simulation, that's a totally different story. That pretty much, you know, answers every question as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so his three explanations for the tides are God hyperventilating, Bob and Dave man in the pumps, or... We're in the Matrix. See, it always comes down to the fact that gravity destroys their little cult. So they will do anything they can and come up with anything they can to try and explain away gravity. But they can. So if the sun and the moon's gravitational pull is so strong and it could move billions, trillions, quadrillions of gallons of water, I don't even know what what the poundage of that would be, how much it would weigh, I have no idea. I could just take a guess, Azalea. Who knows? I have no idea. Find the biggest number, put like, to, you know, put like a hundred zeros after it, and then maybe you'll figure out how much uh, the weight of the water in our oceans are. So the gravitational back to this, the gravitational pull is so strong. Wouldn't you think that a butterfly would have an effect during that period of time? Wouldn't he just be sucked up off the ground? You know, wouldn't we? Of course, we'd be lighter, wouldn't we? It'd be, it'd be a load off our back, wouldn't it? Hey, wait, the sun and the moon and the gravity. Hey, I'm going to weigh about 50 pounds lighter today. Excellent. I can't wait for that uh, for that tide to come. Uh, we'd be in great shape. You know, it's like losing 20 pounds. No, no, because it's not true. Don't worry, guys. You're not having a stroke. He did just say that. He doesn't realize that the formula for gravity actually explains how mass is intrinsically linked to gravity. The more mass of something, the more it's affected by gravity. And the oceans have a lot more mass than a butterfly. Okay, that's one of CC's videos down. Brainy, you're up next. Thanks, fight. Hey, everyone. Brainy Beaver here, or Mr. Beaver if you'd prefer. Either way, I think we can all agree that there really is nothing like a good beaver. But, since we're here to talk about CC and Fight doesn't want a community guideline strike, we can take the beaver talk back to my comments section where the beaver jokes roam free and wild. 
For anyone who's not seen CC, CC spends a lot of time going for epic walks or drives, and he talks a lot about the blindness of people and how we're all so lost and will one day be awakened. He thinks pretty highly of himself and the other Flat Earthers. You are a Flat Earther by being here, and you're one of the smartest people in the world for opening your eyes for this. CC believes in every form of conspiracy, fake NASA, chemtrails, mud floods, flat earth, and if you contradict him too much in his comments, you're controlled opposition. I will say this about CC. He was able to actually discuss the video. He didn't delete my comments or get upset at me directly, but he did post a video complaining about it and stating that I could indeed call him and discuss this on the phone if I wanted to instead. And that I'm likely controlled opposition. So I've been going back and forth with, um, I, you know, I hate to say troll. You know, I, I don't, I don't like that word, but people, shall we say? Say my name, say my name. You acting kind of shady and calling me baby. That are paid to do this. <laughs> That's what they're here to do. There's no, there's no way anybody would take the time and do anything. Look at what's come of us, scouring the depths of YouTube, criticizing the greatest mind of our time. We have gotten off path here because I wanted to talk about Cece's almost childlike level of amazement of the night sky. Let's take a look at that. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you may be. CC here, Chris. <sighs> you know, I get this is kind of an outdone joke by us, but come on, do I really have to straighten this shit out? This is a little conundrum that I never understood. We get past this telephone pole, I'll tell you all about it. Of why I know the earth is flat. And then we're on a flat plane here, motionless, not moving. And if you think we're on a planet or anything like that, you're surely mistaken. Of course, my videos will take you beyond that. Ooh, CC. How far beyond we talk in Fifty Shades of CC? Realm, but for now, let's just observe one thing. Okay, so the sun, here, let me, uh, <laughs> we got somebody behind us. Let me just observe this one point right here, okay? This guy pass. Let me flip the camera. All right, so the sun right now has gone pie uh, beyond the horizon and gotten further away from us and now we're in nighttime okay and that's where it went away right there okay please ensure that I'm staying by the coaster at all times and behind me right here there's still light you see that? Okay. So how, may I ask, could it be possible if your sun goes down? Ah, uh, the camera's right here. And there's still light behind me. That's not light pollution, my friend. There's no way. It's impossible. All right. Well, ZZ. Before you give me the whole head shake and deep think look, maybe I can poke an idea into your brain. You are standing on an oblate spheroid. Your inability to grasp these concepts is mind-boggling, but for fun's sake and because I like bashing my head against the wall with these stupids, I guess we'll dive into this one more time. Let's take a look at why there's some light behind you. You're standing on a sphere, so it's going to look like this. The atmosphere has been made larger for illustrative purposes. But let's add some sunlight from the sun now, because that never goes away. 
So once the sunlight is added, we can see that it's not like half the planet is instantly dark and half the planet is not. In fact, it could be argued that because the average human proper sleep time is approximately 8 hours or one third of a day, that this type of night cycle would line up as one third of the planet is always in general darkness depending on its location. However, from where CC is standing, it's obvious he is below the perspective point that allows him to see the sun. So he sees the light in the sky. And oh my god, he sees the light behind him too. Ooh. Well, that's not that complicated. And to demonstrate that, I have this piece of slightly sophisticated child's fridge art. I have been generous with the height of Cece, obviously, but essentially this picture illustrates what Cece is experiencing. He can see the light in the atmosphere. Amazing. Say nothing of the fact that the atmosphere is made of particles that also glow a bit. And then there's refraction. People can go to Ranty Flat Earth's channel if they want to look at examples of refraction all day long. So the only thing we have left is the customary long look into the distance and CC sigh. Beautiful. I want to thank Fight the Flat Earth for the chance to come on here and talk to all of you today. I have my own channel, and over there we like to take a pretty humorous look at the Flat Earth debate and poke some fun at the Flurfer's expenses. And before I go, I'm currently at 640 subs in or around, and I just want to say, Hey boys, at a thousand subs, this beaver's getting wet. Good morning, good evening. No, 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 not again, just skip. Today's May 18th, uh, 2018. And uh, on Fridays, I like to give you something to think about. Well, here's something to think about, CC. Should you really be recording this whilst you're driving? Because you look like you're going pretty fast, about, say, 60 miles an hour. And every time you look at your phone, an average of two seconds. You know what? This is an ample opportunity to go to the remedial classroom and learn something. Right class, settle down. Okay, is everyone here? I see Mr. Riley is missing. Good, let's get on with it before the Muppet turns up. We're gonna calculate how far CeCe's car travels each time he looks at his camera. CeCe seems to be traveling at quite a high speed, so let's say it's 60 miles an hour. Every time he looks at his phone, he isn't looking at the road for an average of two seconds. To calculate the distance traveled, we need to times the speed by the time. Convert 60 miles an hour to kilometers per hour and you get 97,000. Divide that by 60 and then 60 again to get how many meters per second, which is about 27 meters per second. To get the distance traveled, you times speed by time. So simply times 27 by two to get 54, meaning every time CC looks at the camera, he is traveling about 54 meters. Does it sound safe to any of you to drive 54 meters while not looking at the road? Oh, who am I talking to? Right class, home time. If anyone sees Mr. Riley, just, just tell him it's the weekend tomorrow to make sure he doesn't come in then either. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the first day of my six days of celebration for 5K subs. But before I go, I'd like to call somebody out. Red Pill Philosophy, you're a little bitch. I challenged Red Pill Philosophy to a debate on Thursday, which he accepted until he learned that I want the debate to be moderated. Now, I want a debate to be moderated because otherwise it just becomes a shouting match with people talking over each other and, and going round in circles and nothing ever gets done. I've learned this myself. So I want a moderator in a debate. I don't care who the moderator is. I would like somebody to look after the debate and keep it on track. I told Red Pill Philosophy that he could choose the moderator. I even said it could be Nathan Oakley who was in the comments of his video he did about me. But no. He's too scared to debate me in a structured, orderly debate where he doesn't get the chance to shout over the top of me. So, I'm calling you out right here, Red Pill. Debate me live with a moderator. I will do it anywhere, anytime, but it has to be with a moderator. But right now, I am offering you Thursday, 8pm EST, on my channel, with a moderator. You choose the moderator. Balls in your court, you Mario wannabe. A massive thanks to all my subs. I cannot believe at the growth that I've got. It's, it's astounding. And an extra massive thanks to all my patrons. You guys are amazing. Remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Fight the flat earth.